on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Uh, welcome to another one of our live presentations brought to you by Caribbean Chemicals Jamaica. With me today, I have Dane Parker, who is our product development agronomist from the central region. I am Dennis Lecky, your product development agronomist from the northeast region. And today we'll be looking at Irish potato production, the CCJ way. And our real focus and major focus today will be more on the nutritional aspects and the importance of that in your potato production to assist in giving you greater yields. So I'll turn over to Mr. Parker. Yes, Dennis, and thanks for joining me this afternoon in this conversation. It's going to be a very profitable one for our farmers in that we want to dissect, of course, the different attributes of why the nutrition packages are so built out and at the same time so the conversation is about what to consider um, some of the different environmental requirements we're going to look at the, the omex the miller the agar leaf line and of course the excel line of products and how do they contribute specifically to your potato crop production and at the same time of course we'll explore the granular fertilizers what are those that we carry and of course how do they fit in into your planting your molding operations and again we want to highlight through that some of the success stories we've had of course we've had many we've selected a few for you farmers to look at and at the same time you know the different question and answer segment as we continue so and you know with that Dane and you know for our viewers out there we have had a lot of experience in promoting and growing potatoes as a company with our farmers and it's these experiences that we're sharing with you you know over the years the wealth of knowledge you know where things have gone right and things have gone wrong mm -hmm. and you know to help to modify and that's why i said each year that we do a presentation like this i encourage you all to take part and be a part of it because each year we change we modify we grow as a company and with our experiences we share that with you so some important things that you should be considering before planting potatoes and these are key you know the time of the year potatoes are really grown during a specific period during the year you don't want to try and go outside of that period because your yields may fall due to that the acreage that you're looking at planting because a lot of farmers and i tell farmers this it's better to do one square yes. and do it perfectly right more than to try and do an acre and not be able to care for that crop properly. So definitely then that is one important thing that we look at. Also your land prep. Land preparation is a key aspect in potato production and you need to start your land prep from early. Poor land preparation will more than likely yield to very poor yields. Your planting material, well you know as CCJ we're biased to our Banba potatoes indeed, indeed. but any potato of your choice that you choose to plant we definitely say ensure that you choose the planting material based on the environment the timing of your planting and your ability to grow and care for that particular potato whether it be like the big seed or the small seed potatoes also your financial ability so you know what it is how much money do you have to spend you know you have to definitely look at that if it is that you can only afford five hundred thousand dollars versus five million dollars you determine how much potatoes you have to, to plant and then you look at the potential returns because we all know at the end of our cropping period we want to make some money from our production activities and definitely then with that you know the farmers out there have to have to generally determine you know what it is that their goals are at the end of a crop so over to you indeed so dennis and you know you thought some salient points here farmers one of the things that we need to be mindful of of course is where you're putting that potato um what kind of environment is it is it suitable by the way and at the same time what what are what are some of the climatic conditions that you're likely to face in that space again do you have adequate sunlight i mean some amount of at least eight to twelve hours of sunlight in that space dennis um my farmers in devon will tell you that they are not going to venture into potato at certain specific time of the year you're gonna to have to visit them at february to find potato Most they're definitely. doing something else mm -hmm. and so they are more specific in that they've understood the climate they've recognized that going outside of that belt and doing it any other way is not going to be profitable for them and so They've recognized that um, the planting material that you mentioned, 
and the planting depth and the planting period, the seed condition, all of that ties right in. Mm -hmm. Because here at Caribbean Chemicals, we're going to be looking at, of course, you know, band by in and of itself. But guess what? We ensure that that seed quality that we're getting is of optimum quality. Most definitely. I mean, a grade seed, A++. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that the quality you're getting is going to be translated back into your harvest. So the cleanest and the best of genetic material. How then do you also, since Bamba is, is a big seed, as we've oftentimes said, but the ratios in that bag, of course, will vary. And again, 35% um, of that bag is really big seeds that you probably need to bit or, or cut. And again, so you look at that and then you determine how much do I need to purchase to go into my production. So you've selected your site, you've looked at all the other conditions, and then you know you are ready to get into your production practices. Most definitely, Dean. And then now, you know, f in, in further looking at some of the environmental conditions, you want to also ensure that your soil, and you know, throughout the country, we have varying soil types. Indeed. And you as a farmer would have to understand your t soil type and prepare your land accordingly. So for my farmers in the Northeast region, Portland, St. Mary, St. Anne, typically we would be preparing lands or finish preparing lands by now, October, going into November when our rainy period would have started to set in and ensure that we have our drainage systems in you know we, the land is well plowed so it drains well you know even if the soil is say, acidic or alkaline we do whatever modification work needs to be done to improve the soil structure the soil quality Indeed, so. to ensure that we get that production going you know so definitely we start our land prep at least for two to three months before you know sometimes what a lot of farmers might do they might put in a crop of say pumpkin or peas or beans before the potato crop to ensure that the soil you know after the soil is properly broken on and leave some nutrients in there Indeed. in the in the case of the peas and beans also you know um you, we, we try to ensure that farmers select flat or gently sloping lands however for some farmers that is not an option especially yes, yes. you would know that in manchester uh, so in those cases, we say definitely put in your drainage features ahead of time because you don't want the heavy onset of rain to occur. And then at that point in time, you're hurrying along to try and cut drains through a field. You know, while, while you have constant rains, waterlogged conditions, it will just make the work harder. And sometimes by the time you're finished putting in those drainage features, you end up with potatoes spoiling in your field. So that is definitely something that we want to ensure farmers don't make that mistake with them. Indeed. So, so you've established the field, you've done all the different um, land prep um, issues now, Dennis. Um, now you're getting into actually getting that material, you've bought your seeds. How do you then go about, of course, um, treating with those seeds? We, here at Caribbean Chemicals, we developed a potato treatment program where the seeds themselves are treated prior to the use of those seeds. So the seeds in question that I'm mentioning, farmers, you're going to get 35, 55, meaning you're getting a, the, in length, it's 55 millimeters and in diameter, it's 35 millimeters. As I mentioned earlier, 35% of your Banba seeds are going to be um, larger seeds, meaning that on this end, the next um, portion of the bag is going to be smaller to medium-sized seeds. Those yes. you don't need to bit or do anything with. You can just, of course, sprout them and get into that. Now, should you be bitting or cutting those seeds? One, you need to have a clean knife, clean implements. Yes. And certainly. the reason for this is you don't want to be transmitting any any fungi any into that diseases, open wound, yes. any diseases into that open potato you just cut. And so a 10% bleach solution, each time you cut, you wash your knife or yes, dip your dip knife. knife yes, right yes, yes. So you do so you ensure that you're not transferring material back and forth. Also, once you've done that, you're gonna ensure that you put them in a cool, dry area. It is at this point in time then you can of course do your your dip treatment mm -hmm. and this of course with a optimum and a premium um fungicide such as an acrobat or a toxin okay. you're, you're in the winning the, those areas that you cut they'll be cauterized they'll be sealed off mm -hmm. nothing Certainly. can enter and you're in your undergo if you're doing band by potatoes you're expecting at least 300 to 320 seeds per bag um once you determine that you have a certain acreage 
then that's how we know you do your math to determine how much seed you're going to be needing going forward in this. Most definitely, most definitely. And, you know, we, what we recommend to some farmers that there's some specific care practices that needs to be done. Yes. Then, and, you know, because a lot of farmers, they'll purchase the, the, the potato seeds but, and they'll pack them up in a room that is hot, humid, that's and they no start no. to have mm, breakdown. No, no, so no, no. what we recommend is that as soon as you get the seeds, you know, uh, remove them from the bags, spread them out, cool, dry, well-ventilated place, all right? Select those seeds out that you will be beating. Check to see if you have any that start to break down or showing any signs of breaking down because with all best intentions, there still can be a one or two seeds that would have started to break down. Probably during the handling process, it got squeezed or it got bruised or something to allow for it to start to break down so we just want to ensure that as early as possible and, you and, a, that. and a general rule here dennis is at least at least five percent yes of, of that seed material can be either damaged or be infested in, in whatever way so that five percent is what dennis is talking about yes, in certainly. terms of monitoring and removing and yes. just ensuring you know that it's going to be but guess what we prepare for it we expect it and at the same time, we just implement whatever measures that there needs to be to prevent or to control going forward. Then. Exactly. And, you know, in, in terms of planting out of these seeds, you ensure that whatever seeds are planted have already sprouted. So you don't want to be planting blind potatoes, as it would be called. So if you don't see any sprouts, definitely you know you have to wait till they sprout in order to plant them out. And if you see that the plants, the, the potato seeds, have sprouted prematurely, you can break off those old sprouts. So sometimes you see the potatoes sprouting and the sprouts coming through the bags. You can break those off and it will sprout again and then you'll plant it up because sometimes those older sprouts use up a lot of nutrients and then when you plant them out they really don't grow and develop as how they should and then you don't get the production that you should get from there now in terms of the bamba potato typically about 12 to 15 bags per acre um, would be adequate to plant um, the field and you know this is really determined determinate on your bed size you know furrow size um, your row spacing etc because in some cases on hillsides you might go a bit closer on the flats you might be a bit wider in terms of your spacing um, in terms of your yield range and you know this is something that we really tell farmers that this, you should be trying to get to this kind of a range in order to really be profitable in your production and that is pretty much about 15,000 to about 26,000 27,000 there about kilograms per hectare or just about 14 to 24,000 pounds per acre with that kind of production and the returns that you'd get in terms of price per pound paid by the, the person who is purchasing whether it be a, 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 a middleman higgler or um, someone who's going to store for say later down in the year you know yes, yes. that per you you would you would be able to re gain proper returns on your investment so you know and you know for the farmers out there who is re who are really experienced in potato production i would say a yield ratio of about 14 to 1 to about 30 to 1 is where you really want to be but definitely for for you and your experience then we have had farmers who have gotten up to 35 to 1 yes, in indeed. terms of the yield returns mm -hmm. so that is really where we want farmers to head towards and remember farmers the moment you're in that bracket dennis then as we normally say you're in the money real money you're getting into the real money and that's where that's the business of agriculture to get that return now once you've established your crop you're going to be needing to follow of course the crop care guide this is available upon request you can always go on the different platforms that we have and download and print a copy or you can get a printed copy from us the weekly guide is developed strategically Dennis in that it, it looks at a fungicide being applied yes because yes. blight is going to be very much pretty much in that field whether you want it or they are not or it can show so prevention an insecticide so as to build prevent the buildup of any pest and then of course your nutrition program that you're putting on bear in mind that this is a almost a, a semi-permanent crop you want to be driving your nutrition so as to get that return that we're talking about in terms of that 35 to 1. And again, to, to protect all of that you're laying down, you want to add to that tank mix and adjuvant. adjuvant yes, and yes. your adjuvant benefits cannot be overstated. In your dry conditions, you're getting better coverage, better penetration. In your wet conditions, even better coverage, even mm -hmm. better penetration through your plant tissues, through your canopy. 
so that you're not harboring any diseases or pests. Um, we've normally recommended, and we are sticking to this, get a copper-based fungicide, your solcox, into that plant tissue on those plants at least twice. Or if you can go three times for your crop care program, do it. What is going to happen? You're going to have your black leg or what we call um, soft rot in, the, in the crop yes. itself. Yes, yes. That can wipe out your crop. True, true. Most you don't definitely. want that in your field any at all. It's a bacterial problem. Control it with your soil cocks. It's easy. It's going to be effective to apply. And guess what? It can also be cocktail with anything else. And, and for the most part, and Dane and farmers, is that if it is that this problem occurs in your field, by the time you observe it and start to treat for it, it would have spread through plants most of down. your field and yeah. plants would be going down. You know, so this is something you definitely want to try and prefer. And it, you know, we segue into there that you should ensure that you observe daily for pests and diseases in your field because they tend to spread rather quickly. You know, you, I, I have known instances of a farmer not visiting his field in three days. And over that three days, blight has taken over more than a half of his one acre field. And you know, for, one, for a farmer doing an acre of potato, when you lose a half of that in three to four days, it's a major loss and it's, you're, you're pretty much come trying to catch up Exactly. Um, in terms of production and trying to save as many plants as possible and you know your production starts to fall almost immediately and you know we definitely don't want to have that indeed now what you're seeing here on your screen farmers is a is a pretty depiction of what it is that your nutrition package must look like here at carbon chemicals we're talking about a total nutrition program here now one that is going to be giving the plant all that it needs while you might get an analysis of sorts, mm -hmm. what the plant literally needs is 17 minerals to grow and to develop. Three is getting from the atmosphere, so the other 14 must be supplied. Of course, they are in your macro group and your micros. Whether it be primary or secondary elements, they are required by the plant. I oftentimes said this, and even last night when we were at Cobbler in, in a training session, the argument was try to move a wheelbarrow without the wheel. It's not moving. And then what you'll find <laughs> is that there's no movement whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So the micronutrients, while we might not see them as you know primary, guess what? Those are the wheels on that wheelbarrow we're talking about, you know, to move your calcium, move the different micro um, the different macro elements through the plant okay. system. So while you would have recognized Dennis, in the vegetative stage, prior to tuberization, nitrogen is going to be critical mm -hmm. because it's going to play an important role in the early stage, but at the same time in the latter part. Mm -hmm. Note also that calcium and sulfur is paired. Man manganese is also present. Why? These three products are the what we call the cofactors. They are pretty much important to photosynthesis. The more of it you have in the plant means more mm. manufacturing of food, more photosynthesis. Mm, if they are absent, then guess what? You're starving the plant. You're literally cutting back your, your, your production by another 20% by hampering or leaving out these secondary or micronutrients. And, and definitely, and you know, for a lot of farmers, even the nutrient deficiencies, you know, farmers think that it's a pest or disease problem they have. So like, for example, a copper. Yeah. You see your leaves rolling into each other, mm -hmm. you know, the size of the leaves, or you see damage to the leaf here in terms of zinc, and, um, you know, your leaf color is it's light, yellow, and you see the spots and the burning on leaf tips, and you're saying, but this might be some chemical burn, or it might be a pest or a disease, but really and truly, it's just simple nutritional deficiencies. Yeah, and with go. potatoes, and, you know, for the Banma potato, which is such a high-yielding potato, you know, you need to ensure that the, the nutrient package that you're giving it Indeed. throughout the crop life is very high. And, you know, we even touch on something like a phosphorus and how that now would increase or initiate your tuber development. And for a crop like Banba potatoes, that tends to give you a lot of tubers. So on a Banba plant, if you're getting less than six, seven, eight tubers you're really not getting it but once you're getting that amount of tubers coming up you know that you need the necessary nutrients to give you that production even furthermore and you know we discussed this a bit earlier Dale, and even the image that you're seeing in front of you with this potato plant you see it flowing yes. and we we'll say if it is that the potassium level is low you might see burning in the leaves some people might say that it is 
um, you know, it's a blight issue that is coming in, but really is potassium deficiency. And as such, you know, I say, if your plant's not flowing, when it reach about five, six weeks, the yes, end, yes, you yes. know your plant not happy, your plant is not really going to produce the way you want. So anytime you plant potatoes and you don't see flowing occurring, you know the, you, you, you're kind of falling behind on some nutritional aspects of your potato production. Very much so, Dennis. When you look at the fact that you're the end game Yes. are potatoes simply the end game is potato so you want to be in a position as dennis alluded to earlier to drive each of what we call the growth stages mm -hmm. Most coming out of sprouting give it what it requires you can get it in the blends that we're going to be discussing earlier later rather when it gets into the generative or the tuber initiation stage Provide those micros and macros. You're going to be getting it, farmers, in terms of the yield later on. Your potassium, your calcium. Again, here is magnesium being present. But boron now becomes critical. And still, we have not left out your manganese. Simply okay. because, again, you're driving photosynthesis, which is from the early stage. But you're getting the result in terms of this added benefit in the long term, which is what? Come 12 weeks, come 10 weeks, you're going to be getting larger tubers. How do you ensure that those tubers are not cracked or split? Mm -hmm. Again, your calcium is playing a role. You cannot find calcium in soil or in plant tissues without, again, another cofactor, which is boron. Right. So what are you saying to the plant when you give it only calcium? You're literally starving it. Calcium is immobile. It's going to be at one location in some plant cell or some plant tissues, and that is it. That's the life of calcium. But pair it with boron, put on some Calmax B, and what you'll see going forward, farmers, in terms of your yield per plant, and this is going to be shown in the next clip that you're seeing coming up. So let me tell you, it's going to be paying off in the long term. And, and, and you know, one other thing before, before we move on, Dean, is that you want to try and keep your canopy green and healthy as possible as long as possible because that green healthy canopy is what is going to support your tuber development so if it is by week eight nine your plants start to go into synthesis and start to dry down on you mm -hmm. and for banba that typically doesn't happen because banba we can keep banba going for 16 17 weeks Indeed. you know without any problems but you have to keep that canopy as healthy as possible as bushy as possible to ensure that you're getting that proper tuber development because the food will be being sent down to the tubers. But then it's don't leave the point yet. Dig deeper. Why should the farmer keep that canopy, that foliage, greener for longer? Well, you see, no, definitely, then you see that the, that canopy itself and and how 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 it develops. Now you're having your photosynthesis occurring, you and thing, and that you know, remember the plant pretty much. With the, 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 the water, oxygen, photosynthesis, the nutrients that you are giving it is then going to convert that into the necessary foods that would help to drive your tuber development. And you know, as Dean said, you know, don't leave out your calcium and your boron at this stage. A large portion of farmer losses in potato production Indeed. occurs after the tubers have developed and you get some of the big pretty tubers, but they are cracked, split, they have scabs, they're not, the skins are thin, and as such, you can't get grade A price anymore, you start getting grade B price. And then because of that, you don't make the true money or the true potential income that you can from the crop. So, you hear it now, farmers. The argument is clear, cut and clear. No hidden corners, no tweaks. All we're simply saying, the longer you keep that engine on the plant running, which is are the leaves. Yes, yes. Sir. Manufacturing food, that food is going into storage. That's what the plant is doing. Storing that carbohydrate is manufacturing. Keep the plant moving forward. Get it into the 14 weeks. Yes, you want, yes, you might say it's going to be costing you, but you're going to see the result in the long term in terms of your size, in terms definitely. of your quality, and in terms of the overall harvest. We're pushing it, we're going 30 to 1 this season. Here, different. what you're seeing in, 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 in this image here and now is another farmer who adopted that strategy. It's simple to the point where it is so easy to do and it's also easy not to do. All he did was to change one factor, nutrition. 
And with that, he implemented and utilized the Omics line of products. What has he seen? Up to 45% increase. In what? An overall yield on the same land, but getting 45% more by simply adding the Omics by 20. Seaweed extract, which is giving the plant that added stimulus. Most You're adding also fortify. You're protecting the plant with your phosphites, giving the opportunity for you to drive those fungicides into the plant tissues. But again, it's built with potassium and phosphorus, mm -hmm. giving that added nutrition package. And to top it all off, Calmax B, calcium, boron, magnesium, you name it, and other micronutrients. Doing what? Sealing and ensuring that the, the skin is firm, it can expand as it expands, it's not going to crack nor split. And so you're getting the level of productivity that you so desire and that you need in your crop itself. And Dean, just stick up in there, because what I want, you mentioned something earlier, and for the, for the viewers, the listeners out there, you know, the seaweed extract, you mentioned that, but dig a little deeper into the benefits of the seaweed extract in the Omex Bio 20. And there's also another added benefit of using Bio 20 in your crop production. So touch on that one as well, because that is very important for them to, to get All right. Off. Now, where Bio 20 is concerned, the seaweed or the kelp pack in that is present in it, contains the cytokines, it contains beta ions. So you're building the plants resilience towards the stress conditions and at the same time, you're also signaling to the plant with the cytokines, divide more roots. So at the point of tuberization, it has enough surface air then is to put out more tubers as it contains. Now the kelp pack in it again, it's giving the plant what we call added growth. So you're getting it vertically through your leaves, yes. larger leaf areas, increased biomass but at the same time bigger roots mm -hmm. so that surface that fertilizer we're going to talk about later on be it your abodam or your elixir the plant can pick it up and use it in the, in the later growth stages so when you talk about an omics line of product you know you're talking about macronutrients you're talking about micronutrients be it either of the blends you're getting either some phosphites or some seaweed extract and you're getting macro minerals in the form of both primary which is your uh, NPK, NPK and you're also getting your secondaries which are your, your calcium, your sulfur and your magnesium. How can you not want to take up this winning formula? Mr. Griffiths did it. Will you? And I'm going to challenge you this afternoon to do the same. Okay, and now we'll move on to our Miller potato, you know, the Miller, the Miller products actually in your potato production. And this is one of your farmers, um, Dean, Miss um, Ava Martin, and you can tell us about her. Of course. Here again, the strategy was simple. If you speak to Miss Martin, all she'll tell you about is green stem. In Devon, if you go outside of the belt or if the drought season catch your Dennis, what you're left with is drought, literally, no rainfall. And... How do the farmers in that farming district come back this? Green stem. Added to that, your cytokines. But you cannot take and put on the plant then it's biostimulants and then not feed. Most definitely. So you need to add your nutrient express to that regime. And so you're signaling to the plant, grow and develop. And you're also saying, here is the food to grow and develop. So you're not starving the plant and initiating um, larger leaf era. You're not starving the plant and saying tuberize and then on the onset not give it feed True. and give True. it the right of, type of fertilizer. Your nutrient express 4, 41, 27. So you're signaling to the plant immediately, I'm giving you enough phosphorus and enough potassium to dig deep, extract what is there, but I'm also feeding you with the right type of nutrient. With your Miller technology, you're also getting what we call the transcuticular delivery system. Simply means the plant is pulling in that food, that nutrient, immediately. It's a metabolite. It's a product that the plant literally can use within 5 to 10 minutes and is growing and developing. What more could you ask for? Well, definitely, Dean. The only thing I'd add to Miss Martin's program would have been that I would have told her to use some sugar express also because we definitely want to help push the tubers some more. But another important thing that you touched on earlier was that, you know, especially when it gets dry, you know, a lot of people don't know that green stem, 
And also Bio20 has indeed, that feature indeed. as well. They are anti-stress products. They help exactly. the plant go through that stressful period. So if it is, you know, you have too much rain or too little rain, the time is too dry, you know, Bio20 and the Green Stim, these are two products that could be used to help with the anti-stress conditions. And you know, Miller, Miller has a number of benefits and you know, that's why it is one of our very popular and fast selling products that farmers keep coming to again and again and it's really because you know it helps to, to it's a, it's, a lot of them are carry that complete nutrient package you Indeed. know it has the primary mpk those secondary nutrients and it also has a lot of those micronutrients that the plants would want and you know for, for, for in this case now you know we're having the, the the stimulation so like with your cytokine combined with your green stimuli nutrient express you stimulate your cell division you have your flowering your fruit set um, and, uh, and thing and you know as I mentioned you know definitely when you see your potato plants flowing you know that is a very happy plant and you know that the production is taking place right there it also then you know the green stem with a reduction in your plant stress if the conditions are not optimal that the plant is growing under you have those beta ins to help and assist there it also helps to delay the senescence, which I mentioned earlier, because you Aging. want that green canopy mm. so the plant will stay young, guys. It's kind of it's kind of like an anti-aging cream, but for plants. And once you put these products on, you will help to extend that plant life. And then also, you know, you have a balance and maintain crop growth and development. So, so you know, I tell farmers that you know, in the past, before we had all of these newer hybrid, improved variety of plants. You could have treated them anyway and still gotten production but when you get a hybrid plant that has been you know bred specifically to give you a certain kind of yield yes. you have to then feed and treat that that plant uh, accordingly you know I, I liken it sometimes to when I, I say to a farmer if you have say for example a boar goat you would never spend seventy thousand dollars buying a boar goat, mm -hmm. a kid, mm -hmm. and tie him outside in the rain and leave him not out there it, for time. three, four, five days to suffer day and night in the rain. You're going to lock him up because you know you can't do that. It's a hybrid goat, and you know it's not built mm. to take on those kinds of conditions. Indeed, indeed. So therefore, you treat it accordingly, and that's the same thing that farmers you have to try and ensure that you do with your plants. Indeed, and so farmers, what we're simplifying for you and suggesting to you and even telling you at the, at, at, at the least is that we've not just tested our, our, and, and applied on you we we have seen where farmers have taken on this simple attitude of changing and improving their crop care program and in so doing they're finding the results in the tail end the latter end which is the bumper yield in terms of your potatoes um in our line of chemistries as well we also have the agafert and again agafert is one of the newest lines that we've had thus far yes, but they are so designed with a view in mind that you can apply them within the different growth or development stages of your crop and so you have the root max as the name suggests you also have green max which can be paired and combined and used in the early stage of your crop development and also what you're also seeing is the fact that you're getting further development when it comes on to your tuberization, What's what you put that? on, your flower max. And even though the name suggests that, what it really contains is added phosphorus and potassium. And again, the benefit of adding manganese, your other micronutrients, and magnesium to that blend. Why agar leaf? It's so tailored for your growth stages. You can always just go in and say, oh, what? where's my crop? And you know where it is, and buy that one accordingly. It's free of your chlorides and your sodium. So once you cocktail or you mix that in other tank mixes, then it's, you're not going to get any precipitates or any scorching on your plant itself. The minerals are going to be available. They come with wetting agent. And why do that? You want quicker penetration, better absorption and use of this mineral mm -hmm. you're putting down. Why buy a fertilizer and when you spray it onto the crop, it bounces off and drops on the ground? Nonsense. And so that's why we select these lines and carry them here in Jamaica. The blends, of course, match growth stages and so it's easier to use and, of course, can be applied throughout the crop season. Okay, and so next one we'll look at now is our XL Ag. And these two products will be actually the Saita and the Evergreen. 
and you know Dane as you had mentioned earlier you know, what we want and what we need to have is a healthy crop right through the whole crop life green good foliage you know to absorb the, the, the sunlight you know produce the carbohydrates produce the food necessary for tubers to develop and you know what was done in this demonstration in particular was that Saita and Evergreen were combined mm -hmm. and applied to a treated area. The control area did not get that. And what you can observe from the image in front of you is that the Saita and Evergreen treated area remain greener longer while the untreated area, that control area, started to go into senescence. It started to brown, started to dry down. And as such, you know, that section would definitely give you less production. You know, you'll end up when going to see possibly more cracking, more splitting of your potatoes, etc. So, you know, this combination together and then, you know, with the, 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 the benefits, you know, you have the NPK benefits from the products, you have your humic acid, you have your phosphites, which as mentioned earlier, yeah. assists with your whole fungicide program, prevention of fungal growth in your crop. You have the amino acids, you have the micronutrients and vitamins. All of these combined together help to give you that more healthy plant, greater levels of production. And you know, something I just want to touch on quick because it's something we have been running demonstrations, trials with and experiments with off late is to combine even Zampro mm -hmm. into a, a, a program with a product like Saita uh, to help prevent, you know, like your fight up to our issues. And this has been giving us excellent results and I can't help but pop in with Zampro right there because I'm very impressed by a Zampro Saita combination. I defi definitely know that if it is inc included with the, the Evergreen, you yes, know, you yes, should yes. be getting some excellent results from there. But I wanted to just talk about some of the yield later because this was very impressive when we looked at it. Well, um, what you're seeing on screen, you know, farmers and, and, and Dennis and, and our viewers, is the fact that the product itself would have extended the growth and development of the plant. That's one. While you combine site and evergreen, what you're also adding are all those wonderful minerals Dennis just mentioned. So to add those and add the life expectancy further, what you get is a larger surface area, which are leaves that can manufacture more food. And you're putting on the added calcium and phosphorus and potassium to it. So what you're getting in return is up to 45% more increase in yield. And that's what we saw here in this potato itself. We sampled 20 rows. And from that 20 rows of the treated ear, we're talking about 89 pounds compared to that of about 45 pounds in the control ear. Simply because then it's the same number of plants, but a different yield altogether. Why? What we did, Saita Evergreen made the difference. Yes, and yes, that definitely. difference was simply put in the terms of the added phosphates, the added calcium, little to no cracking whatsoever. We saw up to or as low as 10% in terms of cracking, as opposed to in a control area over 40%. And so what that means, for each of those potatoes that you pulled out, rather than a grade A, we say, for example, grade A is being sold for $90 here and now. Your grade B potato might be for $50 and $60. Uh -huh. And so what the farmer would have saw is that you get a lower return in terms of revenue. Most definitely. Simply because of one change in almost habit. And it's not going to be contributing to any greater significant level of your, your tank mix. Mm -hmm. Because you're putting on minerals that are going to be benefiting you. And you're getting 40%, 45% more. Who wouldn't want that, Dennis? Definitely, I would want that if I am in potato production. Now, um, we'll move on now to our granular fertilizer lines and specifically now we're looking at Abodam. Yes. Now, Abodam is, is one of our newer product, of one of our newer fertilizer lines. And, you know, one thing I must stress with this one is that it has slow release nitrogen. And, you know, the, the, at planting, we would recommend that you'd use like our Abodam 14, 28, 14, and then at molding, which would be about four or five weeks after they have sprouted above ground, you look at using our 15, 5, 35. Indeed. And, you know, once again, we must emphasize the importance of nitrogen, you know, throughout that crop life because you want that canopy to be healthy. And just because you have it for that green growth early out, you want to know that you have that canopy 
being healthy, being supported by nitrogen at molding to help carry the crop through for another five, six, or even seven weeks, depending on the kind of season and the type of production that you want to get from your crop. Well, then it's, your Abaddon fertilizers are simply higher quality blend. Certainly. And so what you're going to be seeing in any case is that the farmer's result is going to be significantly higher. Why is that so? First and foremost, mentioned quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You capsulate that nitrogen so the plant not getting this big burst of nitrogen at once. So it doesn't, it's not sure what to do. Mm -hmm. You're feeding it consistently with time. And with that, you're getting that canopy that you so desire. Remember now, we're working with a window of 12 weeks. And so within that 12 week period, you want that nice burst. So each time the plant gets it, it's picking up and moving accordingly. Then too, you're talking about targeted developmental stages. Mm -hmm. And so as the plant picks up the phosphorus, picks up the potassium, because it's a better quality, you put down better food. Most and definitely. so better food going to result in better harvest, as simple as that. Mm -hmm. Yes, most definitely. And, you know, um, we just want to ensure that we remind the farmers, you know, with this slow-release nitrogen um, as presented in the Abodam fertilizer, for up to 45 days after that initial application, it will be available to the plant slowly but surely. Indeed. But this is under specific conditions because if you get a lot of rain, then it might break down a little bit faster. Yes, but still, yes. nevertheless, um, you know, you have up to 45 days of nitrogen being given to the plant. And, you know, I like to tell farmers this and, you know, think of what is your favorite food. You know, you, you love this food so much, so you grab a big plate and you eat it. And then you go back for a second. But by the time you reach the second, the rest of it you can't eat. Mm -hmm. So it stays and spoils. And, you know, same way then, think about the fertilizer that way. You give it all of this fertilizer, but it's not using all of it at once. And especially for nitrogen, which is something that's highly volatile, Indeed. you know, it, it will break down and evaporate into the atmosphere. If the plant can't use all of it at once, whatever you don't lose to volatilization, you end up having probably weeds or other things mm -hmm. coming in so and using up. Yeah, you're increasing probably weed competition to your plants. And as such, then you might have to go draw for something like a car zone, which I wouldn't mind if you buy it, but still, you know, we don't want you to have to do it for because of probably an improper application of your fertilizers. So definitely there in, you know, farmers, you know, take heed, note that importance of slow release nitrogen in your crop. And bear in mind too, Dennis, that when you put down an, a nitrogen based fertilizer, the rule of thumb is within 30 to 40 minutes of that fertilizer being exposed. And, and we say exposed meaning to sunlight and to the atmosphere. 50% of it goes. Most definitely. So knowing the cost of your nutrient program and then now exposing it or not doing it appropriately, Dennis, yes. you've just given up 50% of that product. So again, now, we, we look at Elixir Zorka and another product itself. Again, the benefit, again, cannot be overstated. For further um, details on this, you can always go back to our previous sessions. But in this instance, Dennis, if you could just move to the next slide so our viewers can see, the potato in question, of course, resulted in a larger yield simply because of better quality in terms of both macro and micro minerals. So the plant is actually absorbing and utilizing the product faster. In the same area, in the same land, in the same row, mm -hmm. you have up to 50% more in terms of yield versus the traditional or blends that were formulated so to speak for the crop in question yes, and yes. so what you consistently see Dennis is the fact that you're getting more per area by utilizing the, the technology at hand which is same product with all your micro because all of them name fertilizer now yes, but yes. then what's in the bag is what makes a difference most definitely how it is formulated is what makes a difference we're talking about compound complex fertilizers each grain containing the minerals versus those that you blend together and then when you put it down some gonna eat some gonna not some gonna sell and so the plant can't benefit in total yes yes where yes, each right. of the grains of the elixir blend comes with all the npk stated on the bag plus your secondary and your micro micros yes yes yesterday in short little me the farmers count Mm -hmm. How many fertilizer, how many minerals come in the bag? And 
each time they count in the box, they count in over 7, over 8, over 9. I'm saying then, if the plant requires 17 minerals to grow and develop, how come you give it 3? Mm -hmm. Biggest definitely. question of the night. Some persons want them to themselves. How would they have done that? How could they have done that? And then you expect the yield in return. Mm. Yes, and yes. so, right in front of you here, farmers, you're, re you're realizing that once you consider these arguments you're putting forward, try tested and proven arguments, Most but definitely. guess what? Still put them to the test. And you see that you're coming out on top of the game. Yes, most definitely, Dean. And you know, in looking at in in in, in just summarizing and you know looking at you know what it is to get a, a successful crop. Yes. You know, we we definitely say to farmers, scout for pests and diseases, yes, make timely applications. Don't yeah, I always say try to prevent it don't don't try to have to fight and cure a problem yes monitor your weather conditions you know if, if you see a see a rainy season coming on so this year seems to be one that is going to continue being wet mm -hmm. you ensure you monitor and you make preparations for higher rainfall levels and you also make your appropriate applications of nutrition nutrients and ensure that is you do a complete nutrient program you don't you know, I said to farmers, as the plant needs it, ensure it is there for them in order to ensure you get that maximum level of production. And that is the ultimate goal, farmers. Indeed. So, And so once you're following this rule of thumb, of course, should you require further assistance, you know, you can always reach out to us. Our WhatsApp line is always active. Our Instagram pages are always active. Somebody will respond to you in very much short order. Immediately that day I was on Mellow FM and almost as I am speaking, persons are sending in messages. What is that number you're asking? Or WhatsApp line 401-4766. You can always send us a, a message, send us an, a clear image of what the issues are and we'll always yes. find time to respond, respond. to you in an, an appropriate manner. On our Instagram pages, send us a message. Like, comment, subscribe. Even recommend and suggest topics that you probably wanted to hear about and things that you'd want to be seeing. And should you find the need for an agronomist at the same time, we are right across the length and breadth of this country. So guess what? Reach out to us. You have no reason to have an issue and not reach out to us. Dennis and I, Janoy, and other members of the team are very much on standby. Sion is in St. Elizabeth. I'm in Manchester and Clarendon. You are in St. Mary, St. Mary, St. Mary, St. and Portland. So we cover the whole island yes, farmers. Right. There's no reason to not reach out to us. Of course, at this time, I'm sure you'd have been participating and you are bubbling up with questions. So I'm going to ask Georgia to just um, provide us with the, the feedback that we've been having since we've been started this session. Okay, I have two, two questions, Dennis and Parker. Sure. Does CCJ have micronutrient mix by itself? Almost certainly. We have it in, be it your, your Omex or your Miller line, but more specifically, we have what is called ZMC Express and we also have what is called Microplex. Recently, we would have introduced what is called Magnesium mm, Plus. plus. Yes, and yes. That, of course, contains the different minerals in their different um, compositions, so as a target, the challenges that you're faced with. So, Reach out to us again in your farm store, just to mention the names again. You have ZMC Express and you also have Microplex and you have Magnesium, Magnesium Plus. Plus. So you have three from which to choose. Um, the mineral compositions are different, but at the same time, you know, they are, they are very much um, available and, and ready to use. Easy to apply. Low rates. What's the benefit of the Elixir granular fertilizer compared to the other granular fertilizer on the market? Wow, that's a question and a half. But I'm prepared to answer it. Right, Dennis, you want to take that oh, one? No, certainly. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So the, the, the idea here, as we mentioned previously, the plant needs all of 17 minerals. Mm -hmm. What we would have done in terms of the development or what the Elixir Zorka would have looked at is the fact that the plant needs these minerals, not all at once, but in specific types or specific mineral types at specific growth phases or phenological stages. So the plant comes with one, a macro, which is a NPK blend, mm -hmm. but it also comes with a secondary macro, which can either include your sulfur, your calcium, or your magnesium. Mm -hmm. So that's what is inside of the bag. It bag no finish yet. In that same bag, um, viewer, you also have your micronutrients. 
Yes, and yes. those micronutrients, again, are targeted for specific growth and development stages in the plant. True, so if true. you are in a young vegetative state and you're using an amosulfur and it comes with sulfur in it, you can combine that with your 62412 that mm -hmm. comes with zinc, boron, and, and these other minerals. Why? Because the plant needs those at a higher rate yes, at yes. that particular growth stage. So you're benefiting all around same time as you put down the minerals themselves. Most definitely. Okay, so before you tell me the activities that are coming up, mm -hmm. I have two questions for the viewing public. Okay, nice. Um, the first question, which two carbon chemical foliar fertilizer reduces impact of stress? Or foliar products reduces the impact of stress. Which two carbon chemical foliars reduces the impact of stress? And the number two question is, which two carbon chemical products has phosphite as an oh, wow. active ingredient? Oh, should I answer it and get the prize or somebody's going to say it? Oh, so listen to me now. Make sure. Which two products can reduce the stress? And knowing what the answer, the, the, they are at the laptop. If you're WhatsApping it, remember 4876. Four zero one. We have a, we have the a answer winner. Yes, Still Stevie, send the answer, Stevie. Stevie Henry. Stevie. Green Steam and Bio Twenty. All right. That's a question number Stevie. one that's gone. Yeah. All right. So Stevie, please send me a number on WhatsApp. Yes. So Stevie, send us a number. Eight seven six four zero one four seven six six. Send me your number, Stevie. All right. So question one is gone. So think about it now. Which of these products contain what phosphites? Yes. Yes. And we mentioned both of them yes, in this. So we we'll mention one, and let, let, let's help them out, let's help them out. One from the Omex line, mm -hmm. and one from, from the Excel yeah. Ag line. Yes. So, so you should be able to grab that one quite easily now, because we narrow it down yes. for you right then and there. Indeed, indeed. Wow. Well, I so the Stevie waiting. again said, oh, Fortify and Saita. So Stevie is the winner. My <laughs> Steve, Steve, <laughs> Stevie, Stevie, on go, 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 take, take, come to the front of the class, Stevie. Come to the front of the class. What's coming up? All right. Next, so please? in the upcoming events, um, you know, well, I want to implore you to tune in um, to Power 106 FM every Wednesday for our regular feature farming today with CCJ. And this is between 6.18 and 6.45 a.m. AM. Um, tune in also to Mellow FM yes. every second Tuesday at 3.15 for our monthly feature on that station. And then on Monday the 24th, I will be having a farmer training session on Irish potato production, um, the CCJ way. And they will be in Muho at Muir House Multipurpose Hall in Buxton Centre. That's more than a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> and on Tuesday, um, the October 25th at 10 a.m., there will be a farmer training in onion production, the CCJ way, and they'll ha also have the Omex representatives at the Yalas Packaging House in St. Thomas and you yourself and John and I will be there yes, indeed, as well indeed. as Doc and the Omex team yes, so that will be an excellent session. Wonderful day is going to be. And also then on Wednesday I will have a training once again and this will be um, at the Orange Park Baptist Church in St. Anne and the Omex representatives will be there with me as well and we'll be looking a lot at how Omex can help to increase your potato production. So we'll be digging into that even more going forward. Yes, indeed, farmers. So we are at the end of this, a very informative session. Of course, I want to thank you for your participation. Feel free to continue to share this. Like, comment, and of course, subscribe. Um, feel free to drop us a line on our different uh, platform, be it on our Instagram or Facebook or our YouTube channel, send us a WhatsApp, whatever the challenges are. I said to a farmer yesterday, whether it be one plant to an orchard, mm -hmm. carbon chemicals, of course, can provide a solution for you. Let's continue to grow your yields as we tell you thanks this afternoon. Dennis, it was good being here with you, sir. Excellent, excellent, excellent being here with you, my friend. And I look forward to more sessions like this and more of your support. Thank you and take care, guys. What good.